Okay, so now we're going to speak about one of the largest enemies of biodiversity, which is cattle ranching, and the way in which this productive activity can be transformed into a very different activity with uh, important environmental services. So I'm going to try to convince you that intensive silvopastoral systems are a solution to the false dilemma of land sparing and land sharing, because they can provide both uh, at the same time. Um, cattle ranching often involves a very low density of animals grazing in degraded pastures that many scientists have compared to biological deserts. And as you all know, it is the main current land use in Latin America with way over 550 million hectares. And it has grown at the expense of forests and also agriculture. Cattle ranching is also a leading driver of land degradation, of biodiversity loss, of altered water cycles, and climate change. And if we want to speak about land use efficiency, we must admit that it is embarrassingly low. The regional average uh, production levels are uh, 20 kilograms of beef or 90 liters of milk per hectare per year. However, cattle ranching can be many different things. Uh, conventionally managed, it is a very efficient driver of ecosystem degradation, but sustainably managed with silvopastoral systems, it is a tool for rehabilitating degraded landscapes. And if these systems are integrated with connectivity corridors and protected areas, it can even become part of a strategy for the ecological restoration of agricultural landscapes. We must also very realistically admit that cattle ranching is not likely to decline anytime soon in, in Latin America, mainly because a large and growing demand exists for all cattle products, but also because this activity is deeply rooted in our Spanish and Portuguese ancestry, and because it has been a reaction to the failures of agriculture for different reasons, and because, unfortunately, it has become instrumental as a means uh, to consolidate land control. Uh, so the environmental transformation of livestock production is a priority for Latin America. We need to move from this path of ongoing degradation of the natural and social capitals onto one that is able of gener to generate uh, environmental goods and also milk, meat, meat and timber. The first change must occur here in the cattle ranchers themselves. So we are speaking about a very deep and significant cultural change. But I'm going to focus more on the uh, biophysical aspects. Um, in these terms, we need to ma make four very important changes. We need to increase plant biomass and diversity. We must cut down soil degradation and promote soil recovery. We must protect water sources and use water efficiently. And we must increase yields on a per hectare, not per animal, uh, basis. Uh, the rehabilitation of cattle ranching lands must achieve several things at the same time. We need to increase productivity and profitability of the system, typical land sparing, at the same time enhance the generation of environmental goods and services, land sharing, and we must also facilitate the release of fragile, marginal, and strategic land areas for ecological restoration, which can be land sparing or land sharing depending on the scale. Uh, silvopastoral systems are agroforestry arrangements that combine fodder plants such as grasses and leguminous herbs with shrubs and trees for animal nutrition and complementary uses. There are many different types. Uh, the most common are scattered trees and pasture lands, but also living fences, the mixed fodder banks, which are uh, cut and carry systems, and the intensive silvopastoral systems, which can be directly grazed by the cattle. They include up to five, uh, 500 trees per hectare, together with more than 10,000 uh, fodder shrubs and highly productive uh, pastures. 
Why do we call them intensive? Uh, it is mainly because of the efficiency of biological processes. Uh, photosynthesis and biomass production, nitrogen fixation, the solubilization of soil phosphorus and other nutrients, uh, the last two contribute to soil organic matter and biological activity. So the inputs of the system are the natural processes themselves rather than uh, chemical or uh, oil-derived inputs. Uh, the key to successful intensive silvopastural systems is the adequate selection of uh, the um, shrub species, which is the backbone of the system. And the two species have shown the best results so far. They are the Mexican sunflower, Titonia diversifolia, and Leucina, Leucaena leucocephala. This system in Panama combines Titonia diversifolia with Atalea palms and Brachiaria uh, pasture. And um, Leucina is um, particularly well adapted to periodic cattle grant, uh, uh, browsing. It is a very efficient nitrogen fixer and it grows rapidly and uh, vigorously. Um, in the 90s, this farm, Lucerna Farm, uh, was a conventional cattle ranch uh, based on a star grass monoculture. It used up to 500 kilograms of nitrogen fertilizer per hectare per year, and um, it started to make a transition to intensive silvopastural systems. Then in 2011, uh, it used no fertilizer. Its uh, animal load went up from 3.5 to 4.5 uh, cows per hectare, and its milk production went up from 9,000 to 15,000 uh, liters per hectare per year. So we are speaking about a shifting paradigm in tropical uh, cattle ranching because we have finally come to understand that maximum biomass production is not achieved in treeless grass monocultures, but rather in complex forests that uh, agroforests that combine pastures, trees, and shrubs. Um, the regional integrated silvopastoral approaches to ecosystem management project was a pilot project that took place between 2002 and 2007 in uh, Colombia, Costa Rica, and uh, Nicaragua. Um, and uh, what we tried to do in this project was promote land use change in the participating farms. This is a good example of one of those farms, Pinsacua, the baseline condition in 2003, and the condition toward the end of the project. Uh, and this is how the silvopastures look uh, today. Um, once more, the baseline 2003 condition, uh, 2008, where you see many more trees in the pastures and also restored riparian uh, buffers. And the 2014 condition, where you see no more treeless pastures, but all of the cattle are grazing under these nice and uh, complex silvopastures. Uh, in this project, we used the diversity and composition of ant assemblages to understand the patterns of uh, diversity in different land uses. So we made a landscape scale, uh, landscape scale study of ant diversity, and we found that silvopastoral systems contain nearly as many species as forests and twice as many ant species as the treeless pastures. Um, in this landscape, the diversity of ant species is directly related to canopy cover. So you find more diversity of ants in land uses with more shade. 71% um, of the farmers that participated in this project mentioned a dramatic increase in the abundance of birds in their farms. And the uh, farmers uh, mentioned many uh, benefits related to biodiversity and the changes in, in vegetation as they adopted silvopastoral systems. Um, here we can compare two types of productive matrices, which are the uh, silvopastoral matrix and the rice monoculture matrix. And it should be obvious here that the silvopastoral matrix is providing, is enhancing landscape connectivity. So currently what we are trying to do is to build on this concept of connectivity in cattle ranching uh, landscapes through the mainstreaming biodiversity into sustainable cattle ranching uh, project, which is known as Ganaderia Colombiana Sostenible. 
um, in, in, it takes place in five different landscapes in Colombia, and the concept of connectivity corridor includes one core strip, which is only 10 meters wide, surrounded by two buffer strips, which are 25 meters wide each. And in the core strip, only farmers that commit to strict conservation will receive payment for environmental services, while in the buffer strips, farmers that commit to uses that are sufficiently compatible with biodiversity com uh, conservation also receive payment for environmental uh, services. Um, but I, I want to go back to our reference ecosystem, agro-ecosystem, which is El Atico Reserve. El Atico Farm um, pioneered the use of silvopastoral systems back in the 1970s in Colombia. Back uh, then, they had a very low tree cover, less than 10 trees per hectare, and it was a conventional farm that used all sorts of chemical inputs. Currently, it has more than six, uh, 70 tree species in its silvopastures, and it produces certified organic milk. The um, uh, Silvopastoral systems at El Atico can be described as a complex and wildlife-friendly uh, matrix. It has different species of grasses uh, combined with up to 15,000 leucina shrubs per hectare, then um, the 30 to 15 medium-sized trees per hectare, a smaller number of large trees of many different species, and then a few palms and important uh, timber trees. Um, as El Atico replaced its conventional treeless pastures with intensive silvopastoral systems, it was able to increase its milk production from 7,400 to more than 18,400 liters of milk per year per hectare. Uh, that happened in 2003. In 2003, they made a very interesting decision. They um, decided to cut down irrigation completely. So the system uh, began to depend on, only on green water, which is the water that is stored in the soil. And the milk production went down to 15 to 16,000 liters per hectare per year, which is still a fairly high uh, milk production. But not only does El Atico produce um, more milk. It produces better milk. Now, it is organic, it has higher protein, it has more energy, and it has a higher calcium content. Uh, another very interesting aspect of uh, production at El Atico is resilience to uh, climate variability. During the last years, we have endured two very hot and dry periods, El Nino, and one exceptionally wet period. And as you can see, milk production per cow has remained very stable throughout uh, all of these uh, uh, abnormal periods. And we must also consider the soil. Here we have um, a reference condition, which is the forest, which 4.3% uh, of organic matter. Uh, the baseline condition, 1994, with 2.9. And as you can see, the silvopastoral systems have a higher organic matter content than the forest itself underneath the tree crowns. And, high, uh, and they also have higher organic matter than the baseline 1994 uh, condition. Um, I also want to speak very briefly about the potential of silvopastoral systems to rehabilitate lands that have been degraded by other production systems. In this case, the intensive production of cotton in the Cesar River Valley, which is in the Colombian uh, Caribbean region. Uh, these lands were inherited by extensive cattle ranching and then uh, have been transformed into intensive silvopastoral systems. And by doing so, they have a much higher animal load and milk production is more than double than it used to be. Uh, but here is a very in important land sparing aspect. You need 15, nearly 15 hectares of conventional pasture to produce one ton of beef per year. If you intensify through the chemical way, you can cut that down to only three hectares, but using lots of chemical inputs. And if you use intensive silvopastoral systems, you only need 1.1 hectares to produce the same amount of meat, and it can be organic meat or milk in some systems.
Um, I, I should also mention that uh, there is a very important uh, difference in temperature, especially in the maximum daily temperature between silvopastoral systems and the treeless pastures in this region. It is a 12 degree difference during the hottest month of the year, which means a lot for milk production and for the welfare of, of uh, cows. So we are speaking here of a win-win situation in which the productive advantages that make silvopastoral systems attractive for landowners ultimately originate from the environmental benefits that they provide. Um, I also want to mention that these systems can include an important number of native trees such as Cordia herascanthus or the endemic and highly vulnerable Mimosa triana which has adapted really, really well to silvopastoral systems or the Colombian nut which is an amazingly beautiful tree called the Cariodendron orinocense or the endemic Cesalpinia ebano, or ebano from the Caribbean region of Colombia, or the highly endangered mahogany that grows really well in silvopastures, or, or the very beautiful Bulnicia carrapo. Um, in Ganaderia Colombiana Sostenible, we are trying to um, promote the conservation of 50 species of global conservation concern within uh, cattle farms. So, in summary, what we are proposing is that the mainstreaming of silvopastoral systems in degraded tropical lands can simultaneously address environmental and productive issues, making cattle ranching part of the, so of the solution rather than the problem. Um, there are a few uh, scientific papers on intensive silvopastoral systems and also tons of gray literature. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>